This is a third part of the second chapter, Artificial Intelligence. There is a question in your textbook. It is a quote that I think is more humbling. Explain the context. Now, the context is about artificial intelligence and the game of chess. Garrett Southwell, who is the author of this essay, Artificial Intelligence, um, talks about the game of chess that Gary Kasparov, the world champion, played with the computer program Deeper Blue. Garrett Southwell, in the excerpt Artificial Intelligence, talks of how the computer Deeper Blue beat the world chess champion Gary Kasparov in 1997. However, before that, Kasparov had beaten the previous computer Deep Blue. The thought that a single human mind, unaided, could defeat a machine which had every single significant chess game ever played loaded into its data banks and which was a product of the combined efforts of a team of experts working for years was a humbling experience for the mankind. Hmm? So what, what does he call this humbling experience? He says that, you know, Gary Kasparov before 1997, he had beaten the computer Deep Blue. Deeper blue, Kasparov na topichu, but Kasparov had, uh, Kasparov had beaten deep blue. So to think that, you know, a computer program deep blue was actually created by so many people together and every significant chess game was actually loaded into it. In spite of that one human brain without any support from any other external system beat that game is a very humbling experience. Humbling in the sense, it's a thing of honor. That thought is uh, a thought of honor to uh, mankind in general, okay? It means that it was a moment of great honor and achievement for human consciousness. Adana humbling that, you know, unaided by any other external system, a human being beat a product which had every single game loaded into its data banks and it was a combined effort of a team of experts working for years and that system was defeated by a single human brain and that was a great honor. Now next question, describe Searle's objection to strong artificial intelligence. So the question is, describe Searle's objection to strong artificial intelligence. So who is Searle? John Rogers Searle is an American philosopher. He's widely noted. This is John Rogers Searle. Okay. He is noted for his um, contribution to philosophy. Okay. So R John Rogers Searle is widely noted for his contributions to philosophy of language, philosophy of mind, and social philosophy. Searle is known for, his, uh, for what is known as a Chinese room argument. The Chinese room argument holds that a digital computer executing a program cannot be shown to have a mind, understanding, or consciousness. So Searle, you know, when a computer is actually involved in exhibiting artificial intelligence, it cannot be called a conscious machine. It cannot be said to have a mind. All right. And he demonstrates it through an experiment, regardless of how intelligently or human like the program may make the computer behave. The argument was presented by John Searle in his paper, Minds, Brains and Programs, published in Behavioral and Sci Brains Sciences, a journal in 1980. Searle argues that suppose there is a computer that behaves as if it knows Chinese. What does it do? It takes Chinese characters as input and by following the instructions of a computer program, produces other Chinese characters which it presents as output. Uh, okay, And when it does it, it can pass the Turing test and it appears as if it understands Chinese. Even a Turing test pass it pass Karnam, what is it doing? It takes a lot of Chinese inputs uh, by using certain programs, uh, it gives a proper output. But Searle asks does it truly mean that the computer knows knows chinese it was merely following a program this can be compared to a person who is in a closed room and has a book with an english version of a computer program by reading instructions in english he could produce more chinese characters as output based on chinese characters that he received as input through a through a lot 
in the door uh, through a slot in the door this man is producing the output based on the instructions in the manual this does not mean that this person knows chinese see namda kai lor english man we have an english manual and we are getting these chinese uh, you know pick you know chinese character uh, pictures of chinese alphabets or chinese characters through a slot and we are sitting in a room reading this english uh, manual and we are looking at these um, characters chinese characters and according to this manual we are creating more chinese characters and giving it passing it outside outside the room this does not mean that we understand chinese we are just following those instructions if somebody comes and ha you know makes a conversation with us in chinese we would probably not understand a word of what is being said or somebody asks us to interact in chinese or use chinese in some other way other than what is mentioned in the manual we will be in a fix we wouldn't know what to do therefore you know just because a computer is following a program very intelligently it does not mean that it has a mind that is what sir maintains this does not mean that this person knows chinese he cannot understand any conversation in chinese but he can do the previous operation well ya ke ee particular operation cheyan pattum but he cannot make a conversation in chinese therefore sir argues that without understanding we cannot describe what the machine is doing as thinking you understand the machine does not have an understanding just like we are using this manual to arrange uh, chinese characters uh, the machine is also following a program that is not understanding and that is not thinking okay so what the machine is doing we cannot call it as thinking and since it does not think it does not have a mind in mind in anything like the normal sense of the word therefore he concludes that the strong ai or strong um artificial intelligence hypothesis is hypothesis is fake you understand so um sarl argues that there is nothing really called a strong um artificial intelligence uh, which we cannot call strong artificial intelligence as thinking or understanding because all that it actually does is follow a program okay follow instructions and it cannot be called as a thinking conscious uh, being artificial intelligence is definitely not like humans so we have come to the end of the chapter thank you very much